Hello again, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Wildcat Weekly. I'm your host, Spencer Chrisman, and in this week's episode, we'll recap you on the LC's 29-17 victory over ETBU, talk to our football correspondent, Alonzo Bellamy, but first, the Wildcats will travel to Marshall, Texas, to take on their arch rival, ETBU. Here's a look at the highlights. The Louisiana College Wildcats will get set to take on rival ETBU for the Battle of the Border Claw, also an ASC game. Senior quarterback Tim Curry getting his first start of the season connects with Cortland Bell for four yards. Wildcats now facing a third and short, and Ryan Montague gets the ball picking up six yards in a first down. First down and Curry's first pass attempt will be to Montague who picks up 10 yards in another LC first down. Facing another third down for the Wildcats after a two yard loss and an incomplete pass, Curry connects with DeMario Parker but loses a yard. A great punt by Tim Willett to pin the ETBU offense inside their own five yard line. Bo Brewer down the ball at the two yard line. ETBU's first drive deep in their own territory, and Trey Darrow will pick up two yards before being stopped by Justin Williams. Third and eight, and Seth Hubert's pass will be intercepted by Shaquille Lewis, his third interception on the season, putting the Wildcat offense in good field position. A quick three and out by the Wildcats offense, and ETBU's next possession, and Toy Glover will be stopped for a two yard loss by Juarez Bradley. Next play, and Glover will try to pick up some yards, gaining two yards before Dominic Graham makes the tackle. Third and 10, and Hubert's pass to Roy Butler in the flats will be stopped for no gain. The defense playing well to start the game. Corey McNeil back to punt for the Tigers, and Ira Jew will receive the punt, but Chris Lemons forces the fumble recovered by the Tigers. Wildcat defense back on the field, and John Gable will pick up six yards before Phil Ford makes the tackle. Third and short, and Huber will try to throw, but his pass will be nearly intercepted by Nate Jansen. Defense comes up huge, forcing the Tigers to punt. Wildcat offense looking to get going, but Montague will lose five yards on the carry. Second and long now for the Wildcats, and Curry will find Montague, who only picks up a yard. A pass interference on the defense gives LC a first down. Montague will get the ball, but loses two more yards. Third and 10 now for the Wildcats, and Curry will try to find Parker, but throws it into double coverage. LC offense struggling so far in the game. Third and 14 now for ETBU, and Huber will take it himself, picking up 14 yards. Flag on the play on Reggie Calhoun for a questionable personal foul. After the penalty on LC's side of the 50, Gable gets the ball and picks up eight yards. Tigers continue with the ground attack and Gable gets the ball and picks up another seven yards. Third and short and Huard finds Hayden Thomas for 19 yards and a first down ETBU now in the red zone. Later in the drive, third and goal and Huber connects with Kwame Spikes for an eight yard touchdown. ETBU leads LC 7-0 late in the first quarter. Wildcats will look to get the offense started and Montague will get the ball and picks up four yards. Started the second quarter and Curry will look for Parker down the sideline, but Dominic Baylor will intercept him. ETBU unable to capitalize on a turnover. Wildcats now at midfield and Curry will be sacked, losing 10 yards. 
Third and long, and Curry will look for Parker, but overthrows him, and Bailey will intercept it, his second interception of the game. ETBU with another chance to extend their lead, and Chris Lemons on the carry will be tackled for no gain, but loses the football, ETBU recovers. Third and long, and Huber will look to throw, but Ford will pressure him, resulting in an incompletion. Senior Jamie Bunning lining up at quarterback now, finds Parker for 11 yards and a first down. Offense mixing it up now and Montague will get the carry and picks up six yards. Third and short and Montague will get the ball again, his third straight carry of the drive and picks up a huge 38 yards, first and goal for the Cats. Second and goal now for the Cats and Bunning will look for Bell in the end zone but his pass will be broken up. Third and goal and Bunning will look to throw but will be sacked sending up a field goal attempt for the Wildcats. Don Oliveris' field goal from 32 yards will be good. Cats on the scoreboard and trail 7-3 in the second quarter. It's down now for ETBU as they look to get something going on offense and Gable picks up three yards. After a false start penalty by ETBU, it makes it second and 12 when Gable gets the carry but can only pick up a yard. Third and long and Huber will try to throw but will be intercepted by Broderick Frederick, Huber's second interception of the game, Wildcat defense comes up big. Momentum with the Wildcats now and Montague will get the carry and picks up 12 yards and a first down. Wildcat offense clicking now, and Bunning connects with Bell, who picks up 12 yards and another first down. Third and nine, and Bunning will find his favorite target, Kyle Gallion, for 10 yards and a touchdown. Gallion's third touchdown on the season. Wildcats are on top, 10 to seven, late in the second quarter. Second and five for ETBU as they look to answer the Wildcats touchdown. Huber's pass will be broken up by Lewis and Richard Logan. Third down and Huber will look to throw, but the Wildcat rush would be too much as Graham comes up with the sack. Wildcat defense playing well in the first half. After a punt by ETBU, Wildcats will look to extend their lead and Bunning will try to throw to Parker as it is nearly intercepted, but Parker makes a heads up play knocking the football loose. Second and 10 and Bunning will find Gallion for 11 yards and a first down setting up another field goal attempt. Oliveras will come on for a second field goal attempt of at the half. A 35 yard field goal would be good. Wildcats lead 13 to seven going into halftime. Start of the third quarter and Huber will connect with Spikes for 10 yards, Logan on the tackle. Second and five and Gable finds some running room and picks up 12 yards and a first down. First down and Huber will find Denbo who picks up nine yards before being forced out of bounds by Reggie Calhoun. The Glover will find it hard to get any running room against the Wildcat defense as he only picks up a yard. Third and nine now for ETBU and the defense comes up big as Ford sacks Huber, the first of three sacks for Ford. Wildcats deep in their own territory and Bunny connects with Parker but will fumble and will be recovered by ETBU. ETBU looking to take advantage of the turnover and Caleb Wallace finds Lemon for five yards tackled by Lewis. Glover continuing to struggle against the LC defense and can only pick up three yards. ETBU will try to take the lead as Huber looks for Denbo in the end zone, but Calhoun makes a great play breaking it up. ETBU will have to kick a field goal. McNeil makes a 37-yarder. ETBU trolls LC 13-10 early in the third. 
Wildcats looking to extend their lead and Bunning hands off the bell on the reverse as he picks up 11 yards. Wildcats will later have to punt in the drop. ETBU will look to take the lead as Gable gets the call and he picks up 11 yards. Second and short and Thomas will get the carry and will be stopped for a two yard loss by Ford as he continues his big day. Huber will look to throw on third down but Calhoun breaks it up. ETBU finding it hard to get any yards against the defense. Wildcats will go to the ground game on this possession as Montague picks up 21 yards. Bunning will look to throw and connects with Parker as he picks up five yards. The offense clicking now, third and short, and Bunning goes back to Galley, who picks up seven yards in a first down. Later in the drive, third and eight for the Wildcats, and Bunning connects with Parker for 31 yards and a touchdown. Wildcats extend their lead 19 to 10 late in the third quarter. The Tigers will try and answer the Wildcats touchdown as Huber connects with Denbo for 14 yards tackled by Calhoun. A bad snap by ETBU and Gable picks up the ball and will be tackled by a host of LC defenders, loss of 11 yards. Third and long for ETBU and Huber will be sacked by Ford, his second sack of the game. He also forces his second fumble of the game, recovered by ETBU. Start of the fourth quarter and Bunning will connect with Parker for 22 yards and a first down putting the Cats in the red zone. A holding penalty by the Wildcats makes it first and 17 and Bunning finds Bell who makes a few people miss and he picks up nine yards. Wildcats facing a fourth and five now, and Bunning finds his favorite target in Galleon, who makes a sliding catch for the first down. Second and goal now for the Wildcats, and Bunning will find Bell again, who picks up seven yards. Oliveras will come on for his third attempt and converts from 25 yards, catch up 22 to 10 early in the fourth quarter. The Tigers looking to find any kind of offense, and Hubert finds Chad Bowers and picks up 28 yards in a first down. First and 10 from the LC 31 and Gable gets the carry and he picks up one yard before being taken down by Graham. Huber back to throw and he finds Spikes who picks up 12 yards and another first down for ETBU. Gable and the Tigers offense finding it hard to get in any running room on the ground as he picks up two yards. Third and two and Huber completes a pass to Denbo for a 10 yard touchdown cutting the Wildcats lead 22 to 17 in the fourth quarter. Bunning and the Wildcats offense will have trouble getting any yards on the next possession. Here on third down, Bunning will be sacked, forcing the Wildcats to punt. ETBU with a big chance here to take the lead and Gable can only find a yard against the defense. Third and nine and Huber will be sacked by Otis Chapman and Preston Tebow. Defense comes up huge again. Wildcats were forced to punt, and Huber will get the ball here, and he picks up seven yards on the quarterback keeper. Third and five, and Huber will find Lemon for the first down as he picks up five yards. ETBU at midfield now, and Thomas will get the carry, but it will be stopped for no gain. Huber will try to take a shot downfield, but will be intercepted by Daniel Hebert. Defense continues to make huge plays. Ball back with the Wildcats and faces another third down. Bunning finds Gallion for 21 yards in the first down. Hey, Gallion, that's how you find that hole. Let's go. Let's go. 
Second down here and Montague will get the call and he picks up seven yards and a huge first down for the Wildcats. Wildcats staying with the ground game and Montague gets the carry and he picks up 31 yards, a huge gain for the Cats offense. After a personal foul penalty, Wildcats closer to the end zone and Montague gets the call as he picks up five yards just short of the end zone. Offense goes back to Montague here as he picks up one yard. Wildcats extend their lead 29 to 17, capping a huge day for Montague. ETBU running out of time here as Hubert finds Tyler Bates for five yards. Third and five and Hubert will look to pass, but will be sat by Ford again and Preston Tebow capping a big day for Ford. Fourth down here and Hubert will try to pass to Butler, but will be nearly intercepted by Jewett. The Wildcats beat ETBU 29-17 retaining the border claw and improving the record of 4-1, 2-0 in conference. The Wildcats will take on number two Mary Harden Baylor next Saturday in Wildcats Stadium at 11 a.m. Well, I mean, we do. We have two great quarterbacks, and it's anybody's game, you know. You know, Tim came out, and they, they were on Tim, and so Jamie came in without missing a beat, and, and he came in and did his thing, and, you know, we, we completed some passes and, and got it moving again. You know, next week it could be the opposite. Either way, I mean, we're, we're a team, and we're going to – whoever's back there, doesn't really matter. We're going to win either way. At this point right now, them two – it's like we got two starters right now. Them, them two great quarterbacks, and whoever got the high hand, that's who going to play. And we, we good with that. We had a great practice with both of them this week that was working both with the ones. And we – whoever got the high hand, Tim came in and, you know, Almost didn't get the job done and got pulled, and Jamie came in and stepped in. Just like last week, Jamie didn't do so good. Tim came in and stepped in. So I think we good around a position like Coach said, and as, as the season goes on, we're just going to get better. I mean, I just basically prepare for everything, any scenario that could possibly come up because, I mean, you never know. And one thing that I've learned from this is the amount of adversity that God will put you through will never outweigh the outcome. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I did some soul searching this week and I had to find out who I really am because, I mean, this is – being here for five years and then getting taken out like that, it was just, I mean, it was a rough situation. And I just, I mean, I searched for God and, and then, I mean, just everyone around me, the support system around me just believed in me and let, let me keep, keep confidence in myself throughout the whole thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's tough to have two quarterbacks like we have, you know, Jamie and Tim. They both have good uh, fundamentals and everything. You know, whoever has a hot hand one week, that's, that's who's going to get it. And the competition they have between each other, you know, that really helps in times like this. You know, Tim came out a little slow. Jamie kept his head up. He came in and just did his job. So it's, it's going to help us having two quarterbacks throughout the rest of the season. And I think it was a lot better. I mean, our defense was on point today. I mean, the energy was high from the start. So I think this year was kind of – it meant more because we actually have a bigger dream. So it meant a little more today. And I'm better a big game. You already know this is the road through the championship, through the conference championship. We beat them and, you know, it's on to the next step. But – the magnitude of, the, of this game weighs on the conference championship, and we know that we're not going to sugarcoat it. We ain't go, you know, downplay it. It is what it is. They are the reigning champs. We got to beat them to, to to be the champs. So a hard-fought win by the Wildcats, and a, a great job, and they retained the border claw. And joining us now is our football correspondent Alonzo Bellamy. Alonzo, uh, for the second straight week, we had a quarterback change, and uh, Jamie Bunny came in and kind of gave a spark, kind of like Tim did last week. Talk about his play and uh, what that does moving forward. Well, I mean, uh, Jamie, Jamie really did a good job with uh, hand, handling the pressure and, and, and the quarterback change from, from the previous week. I mean, Coach Dunn really complimented him um, after the game on, on his poise and his, and, his, uh, and his capability to just go out on the field and just, and just give us that spark that we needed to bring the, uh, bring the game back into our hands. Right. And now, Alonzo, just uh, you have two great quarterbacks. Coach Dunn kind of said last week that whoever has the hot hand, it's always good to have two good ones. Mm -hmm. Just talk about how, uh, what that does for the offense. Well, I mean, it, it does provide the offense with a lot of flexibility. I mean, if one if one quarterback is having having a rough time, usually the second quarterback is tuning into the game. He's ready to come in and really just take it and really just take it from there. Right now, Alonzo, uh, the running game was uh, good this week. You know, Ron had another big day, over 100 yards rushing. Just talk about his play. 
Yeah, I know if Ryan was here, I know he'd give a lot of credit to the offensive line because uh, the front five that we have, I mean, they're really tough. They get out there and they're really, they're really explosive. They're, they're able to push guys five, six yards back and allow Ryan to catch some creases. Right. Now, Bonzo, the uh, defense really played another spectacular game. Just talk about their play throughout the season in that game. I mean, our defense is really our, is, is really our pride and soul right now. I mean, they really, they really, they really helped us with field position a lot. I mean, they forced some three and outs and some, some very crucial times during the game, and that, and that really gave us a chance to really just get some points on the board and stretch the score out a little. Right, now the Wildcats shift their focus to number two, Mary Harden Baylor. It's a big conference game, and uh, just talk about the preparation this week. I mean, as, as a team, I mean, we, had, we recently had a team meeting on Sunday, and uh, we, really, we, really, we really just focused on just not getting too tense and too uptight going into this game. I mean, we really, we really just want to take this game just as any other conference game, just focus on execution, basically, because at the end of the day, I know offensively execution is what's going to allow us to put points on the board. I mean, our defense is playing smash mouth right now. So, I mean, as an offensive unit, we just, we just have to find a way to execute and put points on the board and help our defense. Now, Alonzo, just talk about what uh, the attitude is on the team and how, how they feel going into this game. I mean, the team going into this game, I mean, the team is very pumped as usual, but I mean, they're kind of they're just relaxed. I mean, ba we'll basically just focus on just execution. Like I said before, we're, we're just touching up on some on some miscues and really just getting out the, just getting out our weaknesses right now. We're just focusing on just polishing up some things and just playing as one unit on Saturday. Now, Alonzo, uh, y'all already played a ranked team already at uh, number six, Wesley. Just talk about what y'all prepared for and, you know, what to expect and against another highly ranked opponent. You know, Mary Hart Baylor is number two in the nation this year. Well, yeah, yes, we do. We do recognize that they're number two in the nation. I mean, we, we definitely don't want to come into the game like we did last last year. I mean, we came into the game pumped, and we really would just, we really would just focus on – we we're focused on the team and all and all of the hype, rather than focusing on execution and handling our business. I mean, we got we got off to a good start, but I mean, when it was time to to really put the knife in them, I mean, we weren't we weren't able to do it. I, I don't think we were prepared enough. So we really just have to focus on just staying focused and just, just sticking to the game plan and not just getting caught up in the hype and all the hoopla. Right now, Lonzo, last year uh, y'all had a 10-point lead on Mary Hart and Baylor, and then they kind of just took over the game and blew y'all out. We just talk about does that stick in y'all's mind, and is, do y'all use it as motivation? I mean, every day. I mean, since since last year, since we took the loss, I mean, players, you you can tell. I, I mean, every time you hear the name Mary Hart and Baylor, I mean, the chip comes over the whole team's shoulder. I mean, it's something that we don't take lightly at all. I mean, we really don't want to go out there and embarrass ourselves like we did the second half last year. I mean, we're just focusing on just going out there, hit them in the mouth. Every play, we're going to bring them a physical game. Uh, thank you, Alonzo, for joining us. We look forward to talking to you next week. Now, remember, the number 21-ranked Wildcats take on the number 2-ranked Crusaders this Saturday at 11 a.m. at Wildcat Stadium. Now, if you can't make it to the game, be sure to check Wildcat Weekly next week for the highlights. And for Alonzo Bellamy, I'm Spencer Crispin for Wildcat Weekly and WildcatsMedia.com.